Right before we jump into this video where I'm gonna be talking about camera gear, do you have my gear vault? Well, if not, it's the best way to input, organize, and keep track of all of your camera gear in case something ever happens. You can download it for free right now for iOS and Android at mygearvault.com. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a comparison between the current full frame Canon lineup that is out on the market as of March 2019. Now, this is going to be a long and in depth video because I'm going to go through the specs and put them against each of the cameras to help you determine which one might be the right one for you if you're in the market for a full frame Canon camera. Here's the lineup we've got the Canon EOS RP the 6D Mark II, the EOS R, the 5D Mark IV, and a hole where the 1DX Mark II should be because we don't actually have one, so standing in for the 1DX Mark II will be this brick. Okay, the brick takes its place right there. Now with that being said, we have real world reviews of almost all of these cameras and even the EOS RP, we have a hands-on preview because we got to take that out into the real world and test it out. So you can check the links down below to check out those videos as well as download sample RAW files from all of these cameras, including this brick. So why are the cameras in this order across the bowling alley? Because that's how I wanted it. Well, actually, no, it's all based on price, so we might as well just start with price first. The EOS RP starts at $1,299, and at the time of filming this, comes with a free adapter and a grip. The 6D Mark II, when it's not on rebate, is $1,799. The EOS R is $2,299 with a free adapter for a limited time. The 5D Mark IV is $3,299, and if it's on rebate, it's $3,000. And the 1DX Mark II comes in at $6,000 or $500 less when it's on rebate. Rebate. Now, the interesting thing you will find across the board is that the newer full frame cameras for Canon are all on the lower side. The more professional ones are all starting to get much older. The 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark II, these are three year old cameras. They're coming up on the end of their life cycle but so are DSLRs. Now you'll see that we've got DSLRs up here as well as mirrorless cameras. And if you don't know the difference between those, there's another video linked down below where I did a comparison between mirrorless and DSLR to help you understand the differences. So that's down there. You can check that out when this video is over, but let's start going over the specs of these cameras. First, let's start off with the sensors and how many megapixels each one of these cameras have. The 1DX Mark II is a 20.2 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. The 5D Mark IV is 30.4 megapixel full frame sensor. The EOS R has a 30.3 full frame sensor, which is very similar to what is in the 5D Mark IV. Now they say it's probably the same sensor in the 5D Mark IV as the EOS R with just some subtle technology tweaks to make it for the mirrorless camera. The 6D Mark II has a 26.2 megapixel sensor and the EOS RP rounds this out with a 26.2 megapixel full frame sensor as well. Those are basically the same sensor with just those tweaks made for mirrorless cameras. Now, isn't it interesting here that the most expensive camera doesn't have the most megapixels? Now, the reason being is that this is a full on action professional camera. They wanna squeeze out those megapixels fast, but also with less megapixels, you have better capabilities for high ISO shooting. So in lower light situations, less megapixels tends to be a little better. Since I mentioned ISO, let's talk about those ranges. The 1DX Mark II is 100 to 51,200, expandable to 409,600. The 5D Mark IV is 100 to 32,000, expandable up to 102,400. The EOS R takes that a little further and goes from 100 to 40,000, expandable up to 102,400. The 6D Mark II is the same thing as the EOS R, and the EOS RP has the same ISO range as the other ones. So like I was saying, the less megapixels, the better high ISO capability that you get, and that goes to the 1DX Mark II. Now I haven't given check marks yet, so for best ISO capability, check mark to the 1DX Mark 
II. And in terms of general use, the 5D Mark IV and the EOS R are gonna be great for portraits. They're really great all around cameras. They have slightly more megapixels. They're gonna give you great results in low light situations. Maybe not as far as the 1DX Mark II, but for the money, these two are gonna be great all around cameras. Now, one of the things that helps with high ISO capability are the Digic processors that you find in the cameras. The 1DX Mark II has dual Digic 6 Plus image processors, which is gonna help process those images much faster since you can shoot faster and have higher ISO capabilities. In the 5D Mark IV, you've got one Digic 6 Plus image processor. Now, the EOS R has upped it to Digic 8, the 6D Mark II has a Digic 7, and the EOS RP has a Digic 8 processor as well. So the newer processors are generally better at doing what, everybody? Processing your images. But the two most expensive cameras here have the older processors. Is that a big deal? Not really, these cameras still kick a lot of ass. And this brick will definitely kick your ass. Now I know I haven't given a lot of check marks in this video because it's difficult. Each one of these cameras is designed for a different type of person. And really the point of this video is to give you the specs to help you decide which one might be the right one for you. And at the very end, maybe I'll give a check mark to, well, all of them because they're all special in their very own way. Now let's talk about the mounts. You've got an EF mount in the 1DX Mark II, an EF mount in the 5D Mark IV, an EF mount in the 6D Mark II, and then you have two RF mounts for both of the new EOS R cameras. Now the EOS R cameras in this case are both Gonna get a check mark, even though I said I'm not doing a lot of check marks, because they give you the ability to adapt EF lenses with an adapter. That means they're more versatile. They can use the new fantastic RF glass, as well as adapting any of the EF lenses you already have. So you can't get the 28 to 70 F2 and put it on this brick. You can't take that lens and put it on the 5D Mark IV, but you can do that with the EOS R and the RP and also you can adapt the older lenses, thus why those two get a check mark. In terms of frames per second, this is not even a showdown because the brick is a shit house. It wins. It does 14 frames a second or 16 frames a second in live view. You get seven frames a second in the 5D Mark IV. You get eight frames a second in the EOS R in one shot. Then you get five frames a second in speed priority, three frames per second in tracking priority. Yeah, there's a lot of different options that get dumbed down in the mirrorless cameras. So I'll keep moving on because the 6D Mark II does six and a half frames a second and the EOS RP does five frames a second in one one shot, not continuous, it does three to four frames in speed priority and one to two frames in tracking priority. Yeah, really bad tracking priority in terms of how many frames a second you can shoot. Of course, the 1DX Mark II clocks in at a lot of frames per second. You're paying for it, but you're getting fantastic results. I love that camera. It's a, it is a brick shit house. That's literally why we put a brick here, other than for the fact that I don't own that camera or have one to put up here. The, the 5D Mark IV at seven frames a second, it's still good, but for a camera like this, it probably should have been doing 10 frames a second, but we know that Canon dumbed down a lot of the specs and used a lot of old technology when it came to the 5D Mark IV. Now that's not to say that this isn't a great camera and that you're not gonna be able to get fantastic results because you are if you know what you're doing. But like I was saying, the EOS R and the RP being mirrorless, Canon, for whatever reason, doesn't have the ability to do what Sony and Nikon are doing. The Sony a7 III is 10 frames a second. You can use that for sports, but they don't exactly recommend fast shooting or shooting sports with the RP and the EOS R. I shot basketball with the EOS R. It's a little more difficult, but it definitely can be done because I like the quality I'm getting out of the R more than the 6D Mark II. So in terms of check marks, it's super easy in terms of speed to give the check mark to the brick.
Let me jump in here real quick and ask you, have you checked out Fro Pack 1, which are 14 custom Lightroom presets that we created that give you a great starting point as well as give you some very interesting looks for your RAW files? Well, you can check them out at fronosphoto.com slash presets, where you can play with sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide that it's for you, well, they're on sale for 40% off, so you can pick them up right there on the page. Now, let's get back to the video. Now this one's gonna be interesting because we're talking about the autofocus systems across these cameras. The 1DX Mark II has 61 point autofocus system with 41 of them being cross type. Now that's not a lot of autofocusing points for this type of camera in comparison to something like the D5 from Nikon. There's 153 in the Nikon and only 61 in this bad boy, which always made me question, why aren't there more? but the autofocusing points that they have are fantastic. You do not miss very often with this camera. Now the 5D Mark IV borrowed the same autofocusing system from the 1DX Mark II, so it's 61 point AF system with 41 of those being cross type. The EOS R has 5,655 phase detect autofocusing points. That is a lot. Now, you can't individually go in and select between those. It's probably because it has dual pixel AF. They're counting every single autofocusing point that is there. Now, what's interesting about the mirrorless cameras is that you have the ability to pretty much go edge to edge with your autofocusing points. With the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark II, you're more stuck in the center portion of the frame. And the same thing happens with the 6D Mark II that only has 45 autofocusing points with all of them being cross type. They're clumped more in the center, even worse than the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark II. So they don't spread all the way to the corners. Even the EOS RP has 4,779 phase detect points, and this time Canon tells us that there's 143 of them that are selectable. I love the mirrorless cameras because they give me the ability to take my autofocusing points and move them edge to edge and basically edge to edge. In this case, I'm giving a check mark to the EOS R and the RP is getting a half a check mark because it has less points than this bad boy. But that's the difference between DSLRs and mirrorless when it comes to autofocusing points is that there's a hell of a lot more that you can spread further out across the screen when you are shooting with mirrorless cameras. Since we're talking about autofocus, two of these cameras, now can you guys guess which two of these cameras offer you IAF? This brick doesn't offer you IAF, so none of these DSLRs offer you IAF. You have IAF in the EOS R as well as the EOS RP. Now it's there and they're constantly upgrading or updating their firmware to make it better. But even though these are newer than what Sony has, the Sony IAF is by far, hands down, the best IAF out there on the market. These have them, but they're really not very good. Continuing on with autofocus features that you only find in the mirrorless camera is that you have focus peaking in both the R and the RP. And in the R, you also have a focus guide for when you're shooting in manual. It's really good and functional that when you're in manual and you get these triangles and they line up and they're like, winning, line it up. It's kind of like when Luke Skywalker is flying into the Death Star and they've got the things that come together. And it's like, fire the torpedo missile-y thing. And then he does. Well, that's what you get to do with the EOS R. Something that ends up being important that most people don't think about is what is the max shutter speed that you can use. The 1DX Mark II and the 5D Mark IV top out at 1 8,000th of a second with the mechanical shutter. The EOS R can also do 1 8,000th of a second with the mechanical shutter, but it can also do up to 1 8,000th with an electronic shutter, meaning it can shoot in complete silence. Yes, the 6D Mark II tops out at 1 4,000th of a second with the mechanical shutter, and the EOS RP tops out at 1 4,000th of a second with the mechanical shutter, and it gives you the ability to shoot with the electronic shutter only in one of the auto modes. You can't shoot manual and use the silent shooting, but at least it has the ability to do that because any of the DSLRs are not going to be silent. Now, what they could have done, which is what Sony has done with some of their cameras, is give you the ability to shoot at up to 1 32,000th of a second with an electronic shutter, which means if you're outside shooting wide open with say the new 50 1.2 RF, well, you may need to shoot at one 
16 thousandth of a second or more. Well, you can't go past 1 8 thousandth of a second with any of these cameras in mechanical or with the electronic shutter. And in these two over here, they top out at 1 4 thousandth of a second. So check mark, I'm going check mark EOS R on this because it does 1 8 thousandth of a second and it does 1 8 thousandth of a second silent because if you wanna shoot silent, you need to have a mirrorless camera. Moving on to how many raw shots you can get in a row, AKA the burst rate. The 1DX Mark II is gonna give you 170 frames in a row in raw with autofocus. The 5D Mark IV is only giving you 21 raw files in a row. Yeah, that was disappointing when that camera came out and it's even more disappointing today knowing that it only gives you 21 shots in a row. Part of the reason, Older memory cards, we'll talk about that in a minute. The EOS R gives you 47 raw files in a row. It can max out at those five frames a second, but you'll still get 47 frames in a row, which isn't that bad. The 6D Mark II does 21, so obviously that's on par with the 5D Mark IV, but it's also cheaper, so that's all right. And with the EOS RP, you can do 50 raw files in a row, which you might think is awesome. It is, but it might take you like 40 minutes to get those pictures in a row for it with how slow this camera actually shoots. But at least you can do 50 raw files in a row. Check mark all day. Obviously this camera over here, this brick is much better because it shoots super fast and has a great burst rate. So why can you get 170 shots in a row in the 1DX Mark II? Well, it does have dual card slots, but I'm assuming that it writes that fast when you use just the C fast slot. Now it has C fast, which is super fast. It's also super expensive. And it's also super not long for this world because it's gonna be replaced, in my opinion, by CF Express, which is faster and less expensive. Now, for whatever reason, they put in there a compact flash card, which was awesome 15 years ago when that was the main technology that people used, but it's slower. It's, I'm not gonna say less reliable because knock on bowling alley top, I didn't ever have a problem with them going bad on me, but you could bend pins because they still have pins in them with which would render your camera useless if you dent one of those pins and I guess don't have a CF card. So the 5D Mark IV has one CF slot and one SD slot that is not UHS-2. Again, this was stupid when it was announced. They were using yesterday's technology when they could have been using, you know, today's which is a hell of a lot faster and better. That's why this thing has a terrible burst rate, but at least it has two card slots. I always recommend shooting redundant. Just know it's gonna slow down your shooting because those cards are not super fast. The EOS R has one SD card slot that writes at UHS-2 speed. The 6D Mark II is one SD card slot, which is UHS-1. And the EOS RP has one SD card slot that is also UHS-2. Two. Now, I can't give a check mark to any of them because none of them are perfect. I love the CFast, but I hate the compact flash. I love the dual card slots of the 5D Mark IV, but it's using yesteryear's technology for cards. I like the EOS R using an SD that's UHS-2, but it just has one card slot. So no check marks for anybody. Are you looking to build your own online website or portfolio? Well, personally, I use Squarespace to build out jaredpoland.com, which is where my portfolio is. It's easy, it's affordable, and you don't need to know any coding or HTML to build your website. It's drag and drop, you can do it. And if you'd like to get a free trial, go to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Moving on to a few feature that's very important to a lot of people out there, and that's the video shooting capabilities of these cameras. They all shoot video because they're all amazing. Well, every camera should shoot video today because, well, that's what today's technology calls for. The Brick can shoot 1.4X crop DCI 4K video at up to 60 frames per second. It does full frame video at 1080p and at 120 frames a second, it also shoots in full HD. That is great. This is the oldest camera up here and it does some of the best video possible compared to all of these even though I haven't read all those specs yet, which I'm gonna do right now. The 5D Mark IV disappoints with a 1.74X crop DCI 4K video at up to 30 frames per second. It does 720 at 120 frames per second with no autofocus. Also, C-Log is available as an option if you upgrade and pay for that upgrade, and it's using a bloated 
motion JPEG format. When we shot 4K with this camera, we were filling up cards left and right because it is a bloated file format. It looks very good, it's just huge, those files. And that 1.74x crop factor in 4K is a killer. But the video is still very good out of the 5D Mark IV. The EOS R has 1.74 crop 4K video that is UHD up to 30 frames a second, which is more like a 1.8x crop. It's pretty large in UHD. It also does 720p at 120 frames per second with no autofocus. It does offer you C-Log as well as clean 10-bit 422 out with an external recorder. Now that is a great feature to have built into this camera. Finally, they took something that wasn't built into the 5D Mark IV and included it in this new EOS R, but you're getting killed on that crop factor. Whereas Nikon and Sony are doing full frame 4K, none of these Canons are offering that for some reason. That's a disappointment. Now moving on to the 6D Mark II, it's 1080p at up to 60 frames a second, only in IPB compression. There's no 4K, there's no slow-mo, and there's no C-Log. It does video. It does it okay, but it doesn't do it the best out of what is up here. And finally, the EOS RP has 1.74x crop 4K video at 24 frames per second with extreme rolling shutter, and it's only using contrast detect autofocus, meaning it doesn't use the dual pixel AF when you're shooting in 4K, which basically renders it Kinda useless. Now in 1080, it does up to 60p, but 30p is the lowest option. No 24p available. There's 25p available for PAL, but no 24p, which makes no sense. Why they left it out, I don't know. I can't get an answer to that one. There's no slow-mo and there's no C-Log. So there's a no-go. It really just shoots video. It's, it, but it's the cheapest camera up here. And for the everyday people shooting 1080, getting dual pixel AF, shooting 30 frames a second, they won't really know the difference. But between all of these cameras up here, if we, if we had to choose, and I talked this over with Steven, the best video is probably the one with the least crop factor in this case is the 1DX Mark II. But not far behind that at this point is the EOS R. And don't forget, when you're shooting video looking through a camera, the mirrorless cameras are better because they have electronic viewfinders. You can look through them. You can see everything as you're shooting much better easier. Whereas with the DSLRs, you need to set up a rig or you need to look at the live view on the back of the screen and get a loopy McLooperson. It's just not as good. But if you're locking off, this 1DX Mark II is fantastic. Since I just mentioned electronic viewfinders, if you're not sure the difference between electronic viewfinder and an optical viewfinder, I put together a video that is linked down below that's going to help you understand the pros and the cons to both. Now the 1DX Mark II has 100% coverage in an optical viewfinder, which is the same as the 5D Mark IV. You You've got a 100% viewfinder coverage because you have a 3.69 million dot EVF in the EOS R. That is a fantastic electronic viewfinder. It is clear, it is crisp, it is colorful, it's great when you're outdoors. It just works. I love that electronic viewfinder. There's a 98% viewfinder in the 6D Mark II, so you don't exactly see the entire frame that you're capturing. It's also a much smaller viewfinder than what you're used to. It's super small. The EOS RP has an electronic viewfinder that covers 100%, of course, at 2.36 million dots, except it's very small. And one of the things that I notice is when I'm looking off the edges and not straight through it, it kind of blurs out the viewfinder slightly. I still rather have an electronic viewfinder in this day and age over an optical viewfinder. So in this case, I'm giving a check mark to the EOS R because I love the electronic viewfinder finder in this camera. One of the more important features today is image stabilization or IBIS built into the cameras. Now which one of these? Any of you have it? Anybody? Brick? Do you have? Yeah, yeah, none of them have any image stabilization built in that is physical. Now, the three of these over here have a form of digital IS, which then crops in. It's okay. 
it's not really the greatest thing since sliced bread, but Canon really needs to get off their ass and start putting IBIS into the new bodies that come out into the future. Now, one thing that all of these bodies have, from the most expensive to the least expensive, is dual pixel AF which is a fantastic autofocusing system for shooting video. Speaking of video, all of these cameras up here give you the ability to record audio from external sources, except for only one of them doesn't have the ability to let you monitor the audio, and that one is the 6D Mark II. So no check mark for you. So how about wireless connectivity? Which ones have Wi-Fi, NFC, and give you some other features? Well, let's look at the brick first. This brick can actually have a GPS unit built into it because the 1DX Mark II can give you GPS data. I personally never use that when I have GPS capability because it's just gonna keep chewing away at your battery. The one thing I do recommend is if you are gonna be shooting in the same location a lot, if you're outside and in sight of GPS satellites, take a picture, and then sync the pictures later with that GPS data. The 5D Mark IV has Wi-Fi and NFC, and actually it's really cool when you use the Canon Connect app because you can see a live preview of the video you're about to shoot. You can hit record, you can change your settings. That's actually good across the board here, but I figured I would mention it right there. The EOS R has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and has the ability to send pictures automatically to your phone or to an iPad when you're shooting, and it will do that with JPEGs. Now, does that make up for the fact that it only has one card slot? Not exactly, but it's a pretty cool feature that if you're doing something like a party or a photo booth at your house, that you can have the pictures go right to an iPad when they're taken so people can check them out. The 6D Mark II offers you Wi-Fi and NFC, and the EOS RP also offers you Bluetooth Wi-Fi, and it can send pictures automatically to your phone or tablet, and with the new Canon DPP Express, is gonna let you transfer RAW files. So in this case, the most expensive camera gets no check mark, the RP. It's pretty functional, at least for this spec. Now let's talk about the screens you will find on these cameras, starting with the 1DX Mark II. You have a 3.2 inch, 1.6 million dot touchscreen LCD. You have the same exact touchscreen in the 5D Mark IV. The EOS R is giving you a 3.15 inch, 2.1 million dot vary angle touchscreen. Now that's interesting. I didn't realize there's more resolution in this camera than the older one. So the newer camera is getting better technology. It's also giving you the ability to have a flip out very angle rotatable screen which a lot of people like to have in case they want to shoot higher or in case they want to shoot lower or if they're a vlogger for the very few people that actually need a camera to do vlogging with now the one thing I will say about the very angle screens on the Canon is if you set up the camera straight like this and you pop this other screen out it does not get flush across the board on the back it actually just tilts in a little bit I don't like that because if I'm if I'm getting things straight, I want my lines to be straight, which means if the screen is off axis a little bit, it's going to make it more difficult to move things around. I'm a big proponent of looking through the viewfinder, whether I need to lay on the ground or get up higher, I'm going to get better results if I can look through the viewfinder. Now, if I can't, well, it's nice to have the ability to tilt it down and hold it up and try to frame the shot to get it. The 6D Mark II and the EOS RP both have a three inch 1.04 million dot vary angle touch screen. It's not the greatest quality in the world, but they, th those screens also don't suck. So it's up to you to determine, do you need a vary angle screen? It seems like on all of the newer Canon cameras, they all seem to have it, except for on the pro side. Maybe it's not on the pro side because they're more worried that somebody's gonna break the screen off. I don't know. I think the R has the best of everything. More resolution, it rotates, it's touchscreen. Yeah, check mark, R. Let me jump in here real quick and say, have you signed up for the Fronos Photo email list? Well, if not, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Moving on to the body features, the brick. The brick has a great body. The 1DX Mark II is literally a brick in your hands. It is heavy, 
It feels great. It has a built-in vertical grip on the bottom, which means it can put in a larger battery. Since we haven't talked about batteries yet, it's got the best battery of all of these cameras here because it's the largest battery, but that camera feels great. It's got joysticks, it's got D-pads, it's got a ton of buttons. It's also a hell of a lot more expensive. The 5D Mark IV gives you a joystick. You have all the same features that you normally find on that generation type of camera and the ability to add a vertical grip, which means you can put in two batteries in the bottom, so the battery life ends up being pretty good. Plus, the DSLRs have better battery life for shooting stills. And with bigger batteries and more batteries, that means you get more life when you're shooting video. Now on to the EOS R. It does not have a joystick on this camera, but it does have a multi-function bar, which honestly sucks in my opinion, and I hope they get rid of it or reinvent it to make it much better. Now, even though it doesn't have a joystick, what it does have that is amazing is touch and drag AF, meaning you put your thumb on the back of the LCD screen, and as you move it, it's moving all of those focusing points. That is something I love. You can get a grip for this camera, which means you now have the ability to shoot vertical with a shutter button or horizontal the way that you're going to shoot just for bigger hands. Also, you can include more batteries. Now, the battery life on the mirrorless cameras is not as good as the battery life for shooting stills as the DSLRs, but having two batteries with a grip, yeah, that's pretty good to have. The 6D Mark II basically has nothing. It doesn't really give you touch to drag AF. It doesn't have a joystick. It has sort of a D-pad to move focusing points, but the saving grace in this camera is that all your focusing points are in one small area, so they don't have to go very far. It's not really a saving grace, it's actually a terrible thing, but oh well. The EOS RP has no joystick, no multi-function bar, which is good, but it does have touch to drag AF. I love touch and drag AF. In this case, for body, I'm going with the brick. The brick has the best body. I love bigger things in my hands. I'm not used to big things in my hands, but when I do use cameras, I got something big in my hands and I like it. Now the EOS RP does let you add a grip. It's an extension grip. It serves not much of a function other than to give your pinky a place to rest if that's where your pinky ends up resting. It doesn't allow you to shoot vertically. It doesn't allow you to add extra batteries. It's just an extension grip, which is actually pretty worthwhile if you pick up the RP. Since I already mentioned batteries, let me tell you which batteries go into each of these cameras, starting with the 1DX Mark II. It has an LPE-19 battery. The 5D Mark IV takes an LPE-6N battery, which is the same battery that the EOS R takes, as well as the 6D Mark II, with the only difference being is that the EOS R can charge via USB, which the other two cameras cannot. And now the RP takes an LPE-17 battery, it can also charge via USB. The best battery out of all of these is of course the biggest battery, which means it's the most expensive battery, which means, well, most people don't have it because they don't have a 1DX Mark II, but the bigger the battery, in my opinion, is still better. Now with the bigger battery comes more weight. The 1DX Mark II clocks in at 3.37 pounds, or 1,530 grams. The 5D Mark IV comes in at 1.76 pounds, or 800 grams. The EOS R is 1.45 pounds, or 660 grams. The 6D Mark II is 1.51 pounds, or 686 grams. And the EOS RP is the baby of the group at 1.07 pounds, or 485 grams. Yes, mirrorless cameras are a heck of a lot smaller and lighter than their DSLR counterparts. As you can tell, the RP is the smallest camera up here. It's super thin, it's about that thin at the top of it. You don't get that with a DSLR because even the 6D Mark II is that thick when you put your fingers there. Yeah, it is that chody, it's big. And that was a small camera when they came out with it. The EOS R for a mirrorless camera is actually pretty substantial in your hands compared to some of the older mirrorless cameras where the whole idea was, let's go with smaller cameras and lighter lenses because well, that's what we think people want. Well, what people really want, or what I really want, is better glass. And with better glass comes bigger bodies and bigger glass because it's heavier. 
All of these cameras feel really good in the hands. Canon did a great job designing everything from the RP up to the 1DX Mark II, which now that I think about it, I always said it felt like a brick because it's big and heavy and it's not the most ergonomic, but it still works very well. Of course, you need to decide which camera is right for you. And a lot of that is dependent upon your budget. Is the 1DX Mark II the best choice? It's hard to say these days because for full on sports photographers or action shooters, this is still a great camera, but it's gonna be $5,500 to $6,000 and it's coming up on the end of life. I expect it will be replaced before the Olympics in 2020. That's when I think the 1DX Mark III will come out and that will probably be the last of a DSLR massive sports shooting camera because I think they'll start to go the way of the Sony A9, which is a pro end action camera that can shoot fast auto. It's, it's a fantastic body. The 5D Mark IV is still a great body at the price, but in this day and age, a lot of the stuff that you find in here, you're finding in the EOS R. You can shoot faster with this one. This is a great portrait camera. This is gonna be great for video. This is a great all around camera. If you are looking for a nice camera to start with on the Canon side, it becomes a toss up in this price range between the EOS R and the 5D Mark IV. You have to ask yourself, do you want the electronic viewfinder? Do you need to shoot silent? If you need to shoot silent, the EOS R is something you're gonna go with all day long. Do you need to shoot a lot of frames in a, in a row in terms of frames per second for action? Well, then this may not be the right choice if you're doing a lot of action shooting because the DSLR still on the Canon side is better for shooting action. As we move down the road to the last two, the 6D Mark II and the EOS RP, it's almost like the 6D Mark II isn't really needed anymore. The EOS RP is less expensive. Now I did make a video putting these two cameras next to each other and helping you decide which one might be right for you. That also is going to be linked down below. It's a tough choice. If you're just starting out and you can get the 6D Mark II at the same price as the EOS RP, I could see going for it if you're just looking to do stills, if you're just learning or you need a, I mean, it's a viable camera. It has a great image sensor in there. It, it, for the value, for the price, it's a very good option. It's not the greatest camera in the world, but it's gonna get the job done. And as I always say in my videos, most of photography is about glass, 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 glass. The better the glass, the better the images tend to be, but more important than that is you understanding the fundamentals of photography. If you own a 1DX Mark II, but you don't know shit about the exposure triangle, you're not gonna get great results. Or if you're a hobbyist or a professional, you can take an EOS RP and go get fantastic results because you know what you're doing. The EOS RP is a great option. You may not be able to get a lot of affordable RF glass for it right now, but you can adapt the EF adapter to this and get all the great lenses that Canon has made over the years. This comes down to what is the right choice for you? This is an interesting lineup. Canon's pro offerings right now are getting long in the tooth. They are old. They are still great technology, but I think they are a dying breed. I think you're gonna start to see a 5D Mark V version that's hopefully mirrorless. Hopefully it becomes an EOS R 5D something. That is what I would like to see, a pro mirrorless body. Someday we'll see a high-end pro mirrorless body from Canon. That will be nice. This is a nice lineup with the new EOS R options. At the end of the day, which one is right for you? Let me know in the comments down below. I thank you very much for sticking through this video. All the links are down below to the real world reviews, the hands-on previews, and to the raw files that you can download. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.